Oh, hi, my name is Sai. I work on Open BMC. This is uh, Vanilla. And we have Ted, who, is, who has to go on a business trip, so I'm going to cover for him. So this is the agenda for the, today. Um, we are going to have a quick recap on what we did for the Open BMC. And Vanilla is going to walk us through the next slide, um, which is the updates that we did in the last year. And the last section is for the verified boot feature that we'll go in detail. So for the quick re recap, so OpenBMC, where it began. So back in uh, 2014, we started designing white box switch, the wedge. And typically, a switch has this data plane and control plane. And then there is nothing like a hardware management for a switch. So most of the management is done within the control plane itself. And if you buy different vendor switches, it's going to be different. So that's when we realized adding the hardware management inside the switch would make more sense. So we took the approach of servers. So servers have been managed using BMC for a long time, almost like 20 plus years. So we thought we will be able to leverage the same design and then added the hardware part of it into the wedge. So adding hardware seems to be easy, but once we want to get the software, that's when we felt like it's difficult uh, terrain. Like, uh, especially the hardware is totally different. Like, the, uh, it's not a Xeon-based server, it's a microserver, and then we cannot use exactly the BMC as is. If you go the same route of developing a new BMC for uh, the networking switches, it is time-consuming. So we were quoted about, like, at least a few months to kind of get started on that. And due to schedule pressure, so we were looking at alternatives. So one alternative we looked at, at is the open source. So since BMC has been there for like almost 20 plus years, we expected to find something in the open source, but we could not find anything. So that's when we started uh, writing our own stuff. So this is our switch. Um, so when we started, we wanted to leverage a lot of stuff, like say, uh, Acto environment, U-Boot, so which is easy to get started, and leverage the vendor's SDK as much as possible only change when we can, uh, when we have some bugs or some support is not there, like say some FPGA driver is not there, we added that part of it and made it work. So that happened in uh, 2015. So this is just a quick overview of, where, overview of differences between the existing and then what we made up. When we decided to go through writing our own OpenVMC, so there are major differences. So th this is a slide that I shared last year. Um, for example, like uh, the user interface. So instead of completely depending on the IPMI, we wanted to have SSH-based utilities plus the REST API. These are the two guiding principles for us. The rest of it is pretty much like uh, evident. So just to recap, so during summit uh, 15, we have the proof of concept on the wedge. And in summit 16, so we took all the features for the re required for the Yosemite, which is a multi-node server, and presented it in this uh, forum. And the same thing we did for Lightning. So typically the storage platforms, they use the SAS expander or other expanders firmware to manage the enclosure. So we took the enclosure management outside and then uh, do something similar to the servers actually. So we added a BMC on our storage platform, which is uh, Lightning, and then use OpenBMC to manage that. So Vanilla is going to walk us through what we did in the last one year. Cool. Thanks, Dai. So we all started OpenBMC at Wedge 40, and then we went over to Six Pack, which is our fabric switch. Last year, we introduced Wedge 100 and a Wedge 100S, which, which has a TPM in it. And then we moved on to Fabric Switch, which is our backpack version. Backpack has a chassis management module, which basically can monitor and any, anything to do with like chassis level components, like fans, power supplies, et cetera. Sure, we didn't stop it and stop at Network Switch. We went back into Serverland, and that was when we had Yosemite earlier, which was introduced in the previous OCP. This is Tioga Pass, which is our latest version that we start, uh, latest platform that we introduced last year. Uh, this is a two socket um, sky like um, so compute server that was in, in fact introduced yesterday. 
This is Yosemite V2, which is a refreshed version of Yosemite. And this is a very new server. In fact, like last week, we just got OpenBMC running on that. Moving on to storage platforms, first we started at Lightning. And last year, we introduced a new one called Bryce Candon. So the software updates that we've done was um, we moved on to using the newer, newer um, SOC, AST 2500. In fact, all the new platforms like Backpack, Tiago Pass, Bryce Canyon, all of them have the new AST support so, uh, chip in it. We also moved on to using UBoot 2016. And um, again, the new platforms are migrating towards this. And we are in the process of moving the currently deployed versions also to 2016. The widely deployed kernel version is 2.6, but then the new platforms are at 4.1. All of that was great, and this is the most interesting part now, because this is how we are able to deploy at scale and monitor with OpenBMC in production. So to give a perspective, there are a lot of data centers, many racks, Every rack has racks have storage and servers. On top of these servers are sitting the rack switch, for example, like a wedge 100 that I picked up here. And then there's a fabric switch, like the backpack. So this is how a typical single rack might look like. And this is where OpenVMC is. OpenVMC is in all the servers, rack switch, and the fabric switch. But imagine this at scale. This is only one single rack. But then, at scale, that this is like thousands and thousands of racks across many data centers. So that means it's hundreds and thousands of servers and thousands of rack switches and fabric switches across the data centers. So this is the amount of places where OpenVMC is deployed, and we are trying to like monitor data from these hardware gear, right? So to deploy OpenBMC, for example, to a single server in a data center, a user will have to log in and run up a bunch of SSH commands, transfer like a new image, flash the new image, and then reboot. The reboot would like subsequently bring up the new version that we want. That's awesome for like one server. But what do we do it at scale, right? Here's what we do at scale. So at, at, at Facebook, we use a tool called uh, Tupperware which would like pick up specific hosts in data centers and do the same job that the user was doing earlier. It runs like job, hand, job automation engine, which will run specific jobs on hosts in data centers. And each of these jobs would be doing the same job thing a user was doing earlier. And tada, yes, we have upgraded OpenBMC multiple times in production. So monitoring. OpenBMC has so many things with it, right? We are able to monitor so many hardware components, like fans, power supplies, everything that it comes with the hardware. We run a service externally off of OpenBMC, which can push and pull data from OpenBMC. And this service constantly pulls information from OpenBMC and pushes this data to our internal monitoring system called ODS. So ODS is a real-time monitoring system which can detect like any anomalies that, might, that it has seen with the data that it pulled from OpenVMC. For instance, right, say there are fa we got data like fan RPMs from OpenVMC. We are pushing this data constantly to ODS. And say the fan died, then the RPM reported would have been zero RPM. And that is an anomaly for ODS. And when ODS detects this anomaly, it creates an alert for us. And when these alarms happen, now again, imagine at scale, if there are so many switches, say, for some reason went bad for any X reason, there'll be many alarms that can create from this, right? So then we've hooked up a tool called FBAR, which is a Facebook auto remediation engine. What FBAR would do is look at these alarms that are active and try to auto-remediate problems associated with it. For a small example again, say an interface in OpenBMC was not fine and it flapped, right? It can 
FBAR can like log in automatically into OpenBMC and run a bunch of steps that we've like given it to do. All the time, it might not be an automated process. Maybe the fan went bad, and then we need a technician to come in and fix the fan of the switch, right? And then, yes, FBAR creates a ticket to one of our data center folks. With the ticket will have all information related to understanding what the physical component is. For example, like asset information. What was the fan RPM in this example before the anomaly happened and during the anomaly? And anything to do with physically identifying where and what and what kind of switch it is will be there in the ticket that we send to data center folks. So this is how we've deployed OpenVMC at scale, and we are able to monitor in real time how our switches and servers are doing in production. So back to Sai for verified board. So this is the verified boot feature. So uh, what is the motivation for having us uh, develop this feature? So typically, like when you look at the security um, incidents that happen, it used to happen at applications or database before. But now I think the uh, security attackers, they are becoming so sophisticated, they can even include Trojans or malware inside the SSD disks, actually, or the firmware, because the firmware is becoming so powerful now. So we want to prevent those kind of attacks on BMC. So what, we, what do we need uh, in the hardware to uh, support this feature. The first one is the two spy flash devices. So typically we need one spy flash for booting the BMC. So that's what we used to have. But we added another spy flash before as a recovery mechanism. Just in case the first spy flash gets corrupted, we used to boot from the second one. That's the purpose of having two spy flashes in our previous systems. But now we want to repurpose it for verified boot feature. So in this case, we are going to have one spy flash, which is as a, as a secure ROM. It's going to be read-only. It's going to be burned. And then the second one is where we go going to update periodically. And the second hardware we added is the TPM for the BMC. So typically, you would have seen TPMs for the host systems to protect the boot. Uh, but now I think we are adding it to the BMC. We are still not using it at this time, but we are having plans to kind of support this TPM as part of one of this uh, verified boot to make it more secure. And most of the logic that need to happen for the verified boot is in the U-boot, just totally constrained inside that. So the root of trust is the second phase loader that boots up. And then we, we use a key hierarchy, which means like we have a set of keys that we use, and then anyone, like other ODMs, they want to uh, create the images so we can sign the keys of theirs. And then the images will be signed with their keys. So it's this way, I think we can separate the key, si key signing or the image signing uh, being part of the ROM itself. So verified fit. So this is what we do, like firmware image table for the, as a blob for both kernel and root file system. And the verified boot status, like once system comes back up, we want to query like what components it booted. Did it boot the recovery or regular image? So this is our verified boot hardware. So as you can see on the top, we have the secure flash. And right now, typically it is like a um, read-write, but now we are going to make it as read-only. And on the bottom, you can see the TPM. So the highlighted one says that whenever the TPM gets reset, it's only due to when BMC gets reset. So we cannot, the user should not, should not be able to reset the TPM independent of BMC. So this logic is very important for us, so that if anybody gets uh, want to attack, they can replace the TPM, or they can reset the TPM, with, which can prevent detecting these kind of attacks. So this is the verified boot flow. So once the system comes back up, it just always boots the read-only flash. And then the read-only flash has the public key burned in. It checks the uh, keys, the signing keys, image signing keys. Make sure that they are okay. And then it checks U-boot code and makes sure that they are okay, and then it jumps into the U-boot. So U-boot checks the uh, root file system and also the kernel image before giving control to the kernel. 
So what happens in case of a failure? It always goes to the other side, on the right side. So it goes to the recovery boot, which is already part of the uh, read-only memory. And then it can have a couple of options. It has the golden image inside that. It can boot that. Or it can go on the TFTP and get a fresh image, which will be burned onto the read-write flash, and then go back to the reboot. So since now we have two flash devices, we don't want to maintain two different spare parts in the, in the data center, and it will create confusion. So instead of that, we want to have a symmetric layout for the both flash devices. So if you look at the secure flash or BMC flash, they both have same binary code. You can just swap them. It doesn't matter. So, but the way it works is when the secure flash, in, in a typical scenario, when everything is fine, when the system reboots, the U-boot SPL is the one that, the highlighted portion that runs first, and then checks those keys, and then the U-boot, and passes control to the U-boot. And U-boot will check the root file system, Linux, and then only when it passes, it goes back to the uh, Linux. Otherwise, it just comes back as a failure, uh, fall back to the recovery U-boot. So in case of failures, for example, this is the sequence of operations. So you use SPL, and then it will automatically go to the recovery U-boot, and then boot the recovery Linux root file system. So in summary, so we see OpenBMC as a system management solution for all our data center equipment, like whether it is a storage or a networking switch or a fabric switch or a server. So we just try to make sure that OpenBMC is the way to go. And we deployed it at scale, like thousands and thousands or 10,000 or 100,000 actually, plus uh, using this uh, OpenBMC on our systems. And we want to manage OpenBMC just like any other equipment, like package updates or um, putting it uh, uh, along with the Facebook infrastructure to kind of read alerts. So it is going to look like another server. And for collaboration, we uh, have this GitHub link. So last year, I think we introduced a concept of a developer platform. So we wanted to work on some developer platform where we can collaborate with each other. Because the hardware are so different that if we have some issue, which you want to debug, it's not easily reproducible on the other end. So the idea was to have a base board with AST2500 kind of uh, uh, processor, the BMC chip, similar to the evaluation kit, and then provide COM Express connectivity so that people can buy their own host, like say a Broadwell DE or a Skylake kind of uh, COM Express, plug it in, and then it becomes like a, a developer platform. So we worked with a company called Portwell, and they were ready to design this for us. So it's a carrier board, and it hope we this will allow us to kind of accelerate uh, you know, innovation. So last year we had this concept, we worked with them, and then had the board is ready. We have the board here, and we brought up like last couple of days back actually. So OpenBMC boots up on this, and then the BIOS on the Com Express. This is the Com Express card, so we can just plug it out and then put whether it is a Intel or ARM or anything, it doesn't matter. As long as it is in COM Express standard module, you can just plug it in. And this is like an evaluation kit. So you have all the ports and SD card and uh, um, GL flash for TPM, anything, any features that we mentioned before, they all can be tested here using this. So the idea is to kind of, if you have, we have any partners to work with, we can use this as a developer platform and start adding code and then uh, writing features and debug together. That's it. Thanks. So, time for questions. This is a prototype they built like 10 pieces and five pieces are populated and two days back it, we brought it up. So I think uh, we will go to EBT and then probably we can work offline to get those pieces. I think it will be port well. They'll be selling it. Just like off the shelf Com Express module, you can buy this. So my question is the secure boot feature. So you, uh, I know you have two spy flash in there. So, so are you, when you boot up, you, it looks like you are running from the read-write spy flash, you know, but 
that's, if that's writable, how can that be secure? You know, which code run first? Always the code. Yes. Oh, yes. okay. Always read it only. I think if you look at this, it's always boots the, uh, you boot SPL, the second phase loader, always. And then checks the second flash. Make sure that that is fine. Only then it jumps into the U boot. Otherwise, it always boots only the secure flash. Can you have different size spy flashes? Actually, in this case, we just need only the top the small 16K. I think that's, a, that's all uh, the space we need, actually. Yeah, this can be the second one could be anything, actually. It could be SD card or it could be an EMMC. So you, uh, you just like uh, um, you mentioned the you you, you updated the, the the Open BMC code right? So you, will the GitHub be updated with the newer code? So the GitHub is always updated every 15 minutes actually. So as soon as we put some code in after the review, it will be updated with the latest code. Uh, but for the new platforms, like say the platforms that got announced yesterday, like say the Yosemite V2, so that will be later actually. So we are not yet open source that. Which code are you referring to? Some code uh, which is now you said you, all your newer platforms are using AST 2500 series, right? So all I mean the code that whole code is there already. It's there. Yeah, yeah. AST 2500, U boot 2016, 4.1 kernel. So already, is there. it's already part of uh, GitHub. Anybody else? If not, thank you very much for attending. Thank you. And our next session will start in. That's right, give them a hand. We'll start in 10 minutes.